Welcome back everyone. Um, if you remember last time we were building the actual virtual machine that we were going to run Minecraft on for the Byte 4. Now I've done a little bit of work on it since then to put a few plugins in place, but I haven't moved it from my laptop and haven't given you guys an address to connect to. So, although I don't know the address off the top of my head, it'll be on the screen. And what I figured we would do is, since I have to go through the process of exporting this, moving it to the Byte 4, turning Hyper-V on, on the Byte 4, and all of that, I figured I'd walk through most of that. So the export portion is pretty straightforward. We're going to grab the virtual machine we care about, and we're just going to hit export and browse to where we want to go. And in this case, I have a 120 gig Mushkin Ventura Ultra USB SSD plugged into my laptop. Uh, this shouldn't be a particularly large virtual machine, so like a 32 gig flash drive would have been fine. I just wanted something quicker. And uh, export it there, off it goes. And when it's done, there'll just be a folder here that I can import it from. Now while that's exporting, let's go ahead and bring Byte 4 in. So I've got my Byte 4 here. And what I need to do is turn Windows features on and off and we're going to turn on Hyper-V. Hit OK. And then it's going to ask to reboot. It means I'll lose video for a minute. What I did not have to do for the Byte 4 that you may have to do if you have an older system. So I'm, I'm using the Byte 4 here, but if you wanted just like a basic VM host and wanted something either a little more flexible with room for some PCIe cards or you wanted something that you maybe could put more drives in um, since you wanted to do network storage at the same time, devices like the Office PC that we used are great for that with the caveat of they typically didn't always ship with virtualization enabled on the CPU. For a while it was considered a unnecessary feature and a potential security risk so not all the systems ship with it on now since every BIOS is different I'm not going to go through and do that on this system and plus I don't have to like I said it's already enabled and off screen, I'm just going to unplug this drive now that my export's done and plug it into the Byte 4. All right, as I was saying, um, what we need to do here is create a new virtual switch. Now, Hyper-V supports three different types of virtual switch, and we're only going to be using the simplest and probably easiest to understand one and that is the external virtual switch um, that generates a network that will be bound to a physical adapter on your device in this case i'm going to create it and i believe it is primary adapter here so this one that is our PoE adapter and that's just we're going to use that so we've only got one to plug in and I'm going to allow the OS to continue to use it otherwise I won't be able to remote into it unless I use the second network adapter now we could attach it to controller number two and then just use PoE to power it and then plug in a second network adapter for remote access to the device itself. But I want to do this all on one cable. 
because we can. And honestly, I shouldn't need to get into the OS, and at gigabit, I don't see any bandwidth issues there. I'm going to apply that. It'll probably kick me out of my remote desktop session, and then I'll have to connect in again, which is fine. All right, and we're reconnected. And you know what? I'm going to name this external so that we know what we're talking to. I'm going to apply it. Now, I need to change a few other settings. I need to change where we store virtual hard disks and virtual machines. And I'm going to put these on drive E. I'm going to create a new folder in here called Hyper-V. And the reason I'm doing this is twofold. Number one, I want everything on the NVMe. Number two, because the Byte 4 only has a 64 gig OS partition, um, there's just not enough room. So the NVMe is gonna be faster and there's not enough room on the OS partition. And you know, we didn't upgrade this thing with five terabytes of SSD for well, I mean, we did. We upgraded it because we could. Hey, so I've got to reshoot this a little bit. Um, something stopped OBS on me. I don't know what it is. Something about SSHing into systems seems to interrupt OBS. Uh, anyway, what I wanted to show you was importing the virtual machine, which I've got my flash drive plugged into the Byte 3. I am remoted into it, and it, it's really simple. There's just this import virtual machine section. It's gonna ask you what folder it's in, which in our case it's F, and there it is. It sees the VM, and then this is the big question. Register in place will run the virtual machine from that drive. So if you have a virtual machine that you are using for dev work and sharing among a team, there's a couple of different ways to manage that. But one would be, you know, you hand it to me, I plug in a USB SSD, I run the virtual machine from it, and then I simply shut it off and hand it to you, and then you can continue to do work with it. And um, I've done things like that before. You can also restore the virtual machine, which would be if I had a system with a hot swap bay and part of the upgrade procedure involved just replacing the storage media and the VM on it I could remove it plug it in and then restore the VM register it in place what we did is this copy function which physically copies the virtual machine from where it is and in this case moves it to E Hyper-V and then we would just hit next, next and I can't do this because I already copied this virtual machine yesterday and then found out my clip was missing in editing. Uh, but that would have been the procedure and then it only takes a second. After that it was just a simple procedure of going into the settings double checking that I had the right virtual CPU count, making sure that I connected it to the correct network adapter on, since the naming convention is different there. If you were moving, if you were working in a work group, if you were moving the virtual machine around, you would want to make sure that everyone uses the same naming convention for their network adapters. All right, so I'm gonna check a couple of other things before I Turn this on. I want to set that to three virtual CPUs. I want to turn off dynamic memory because Linux doesn't always play nicely with that. And that's it. If I start this and I connect, just like before, to sign in, I need to remember what root password I sent. Oh. Yeah, theoretic 
correctly at this point. I can start and then proceed to connect to the Minecraft server once it is running. Alrighty. 47 seconds and now and I should have remembered that that would interrupt my recording which is fine all you missed me doing was connecting because I kind of wanted to see what the load averages looked like while I was running around because that'll give me a feel for you know how many people it can handle actually that all loaded in right away oh no bees Well, so I'm running around at 80 frames a second and loading plenty. What's my view distance set to? 12 chunks for the render distance. And what does... All right. Well, that looks fine. Not bad. Doo -doo. And let's go back to the bite. I wonder. I don't think it does. Does task manager show the CPU load on the system? Well, it does but it doesn't know where it is it knows that half the system CPU is being used but it doesn't really know what most of it's doing it looks like oh there we go VM mem so it knows that the virtual machine subsystem is using it alrighty folks that's it um, like I said the address will be there in text once this is up and running and I'm going to probably put it in the switch room just where it's less likely to be in my way but go ahead and give it a static IP address set up my port forwarding can't show you guys that security issues um, if you want me to do a tutorial on something like that I'm more than happy to but I can't show you a production environment and yeah that's it that's how simple that was i think that took us 20 minutes if anyone has any questions make sure to put them in the comments below and then beyond that um obviously i want to thank azul for sending us in the bite four um this thing's been a blast to play with torture upgrade you know all those fun things and then I want to thank Electrix for providing our opening and closing themes. I want to thank anyone who has helped support Pocketables either by using our Amazon affiliate links or by uh, subscribing to us on Patreon. It's support like that that helps make this possible. And finally, thank you for watching.